Hello everybody. Today it is my second lecture of the module 9. In module 9, I am discussing the vibration of rectangular plate. In that connection, in the previous lecture, I have covered the eigen frequencies and eigen shapes of rectangular plates and also the decoupling procedure of the undamped free vibration equation using the mode superposition technique. Now today I will discuss other boundary conditions because the analytical solution was obtained in case of a plate which is simply supported on all edges but there are situations where the plate is not simply supported along all edges. Some edge may be clamped or some edge may be uh, say free. For example, in a continuous slab in a building, some edges are continuous over the beam, intermediate beam. So therefore, the support condition, the fixity may be assumed at the connection between the beam and the slab. So therefore, other boundary conditions also arises in vibration problem. So today, our discussion will be on natural frequency and mode shapes of plate with two opposite edges simply supported. That is actually known as Levis boundary condition, popularly known as Levis boundary condition. In earlier class, I have discussed the Navier boundary condition and here it will be in Levis boundary condition. Now after finishing this frequency and mode shapes topic, then I will switch over to solve a initial value problem with some numerical example. Okay, so let us start this. This plate that you are seeing is simply supported on the opposite edges that is x is equal to 0 and x is equal to a are simply supported whereas the boundary conditions at the other two opposite edges that y is equal to 0, y is equal to b is not mentioned. So this may be any type of boundary condition. For example, two edges may be fixed, two edges may be free or one edge may be fixed, so like that. So, so many condition arises accompanying the boundary condition of two opposite edges which are simply supported. So, this condition is popularly known as Levy's boundary condition. Now, Levy after seeing this type of boundary condition, he proposed a shape function which will satisfy the boundary condition. For example, if I take a function of uh, the function of x and function of y and function of x is taken as a sine function sin m pi x by a for any integer value of m. Then one can see that when we substitute this uh, function in the opposite edges this x is equal to 0 x is equal to a the boundary condition is completely satisfied because after second derivative also you will arrive at the sine function so automatically sine 0 is uh, 0 and sine m pi for any integral value of m is also 0. So therefore this is the appropriate function for this kind of boundary condition in plate, rectangular plate. However, the function of y that is denoted here with capital Y is not known. So that we have to find out after substituting this in the governing differential equation of motion and then after seeing how the constants of integration after solving this equation in y then application applying the boundary condition at the other two opposite edges we can solve it. Now suppose other two edges are also simply supported in that case it may also be there it is not quite uncommon that Levy's method cannot be applied in uh, sim all uh, simply supported edges in a plate. So even two edges, opposite two edges, other remaining two opposite edges are simply supported. In this condition also Levy's method can be applied. Now at y is equal to 0, at y is equal to b, we have to specify the boundary condition to get the complete solution of the boundary value problem. Okay. Now in this problem, Suppose in another case, okay, in previous case I have shown that x is equal to 0, x is equal to a are simply supported. 
Now for example, a plate is having a simply supported edge at y is equal to 0 and y is equal to b. Then it is seen that sin n pi y by b will satisfy the boundary condition at y is equal to 0 and y is equal to b. So we can conveniently take the displacement shape wxy as a x function x is a function solely on x and sin n pi y by b. So like that we can take depending on the uh, boundary condition appearing in the two opposite edges whether it is x is equal to 0 and a edge are simply supported or y is equal to 0 or y is equal to b are simply supported. So if y is equal to 0 and y is equal to b are simply supported we get w is equal to 0 and del square w by del y square equal to 0. This term is coming from the bending moment expression because the bending moment when we write the expression it will contain the summation of two curvature multiplied by the flexural rigidity of the plate. However, you can see that the plate is supported along the x axis so there cannot be any curvature at the boundary along the x axis that means del square w by del x square equal to 0. So as a result we get w is equal to 0 and del square w by del y square equal to 0. Okay. Now let us start actual problem that is governing differential equation of motion is given by d del 4 w plus rho del square w by del t square equal to 0 and let harmonic motion occurs in free vibration that is d del 4 w x y minus rho omega square w x y equal to 0 where del 4 w x y minus gamma 4 into w equal to 0 where gamma 4 is equal to rho omega square by d. So this is the frequency parameter which we will target to find it after solving the boundary value problem and then we can find out the natural frequency. So we get a equation that is del 4 capital W which is a function of x and y minus gamma to the power 4 w x y equal to 0 where gamma to the power 4 is rho omega square by d. So based on that let us now proceed forward. So assume the mode shift function as w x y equal to sin m pi x by a capital Y into Y. So this function satisfy the boundary condition at x is equal to 0 and x is equal to A. That means this edge if this is the origin M and this is the x axis this is y axis. So the boundary condition is satisfied after putting x is equal to 0 along this line the x is equal to 0 and the opposite line also you will see that x is equal to A. So therefore these two edges satisfy this boundary condition or qualify the boundary condition as a sine function of m pi x by a. Substituting this in the differential equation of motion. What was the differential equation of motion? Del 4 w minus gamma to the power 4 w equal to 0 where gamma and d is also there. After uh, dividing by d, it becomes gamma to the power 4 w, where gamma to the power 4 can be written as rho omega square by d. Now remember that uh, in our sign convention or uh, notation, we have used rho as the mass density of the plate, mass density of plate per unit area, per unit area. So in a numerical problem, you should always suppose the material density is given and thickness is known for a uniform plate then you should calculate first the mass density rho as volume density multiplied by the thickness ok. So after substituting this we are now getting that is after expansion of this we are getting this equation this equation is obtained after writing in full this operator del 4 and associated capital W. So now after substituting this, this function 
y w is equal to sin m pi x by a y into y in this equation we now arrive at d to the power 4 into y divided by d y to the power 4 minus 2 m square pi square by s square into d square y by dy square plus m to the power 4 pi to the power 4 divided by a to the power 4 into y minus gamma to the power 4 into y equal to 0. So this is the equation that we have to solve to find out y capital Y and then we can find the complete eigen function. Okay. Now in order to solve this because this is a differential equation with constant coefficient so we assume that y is equal to b e to the power p t where p is the characteristic roots. So after substituting this we get p to the power 4 minus 2 m square pi square by s square into p square plus m to the power 4 pi to the power 4 divided by a to the power 4 minus gamma to the power 4. So writing in this, uh, this expression in a factor form that we can write p square minus m square pi square by s square whole square that is this expression is written in the form of perfect square. So it is written like that and then other term is already there. So now we can factorize this equation. This equation can be further factorized and factorize rule we know. So it is written as p square minus m square pi square by s square minus gamma square into p square minus m square pi square by s square plus gamma square equal to 0. So this is the equation from which we have to obtain this uh, roots of the characteristic equation. Uh, there will be four roots there because this is a fourth order polynomial. Let us investigate the roots. So roots are actually P1, P2. First root say plus alpha, minus alpha. P2 is minus alpha. P1 is plus alpha. And alpha is given by plus minus root over gamma square plus m square pi square by s square. Other root is P3, P4 and it will be a imaginary number so it will be in fact it is a complex number but real part is 0 so p3 p4 is equal to plus minus ib where i beta so beta is root over gamma square minus m square pi square by s square so we get two real roots and two imaginary roots in view of the two imaginary roots the oscillatory terms comes so when we write the solution as y is equal to b1 e to the power plus alpha y plus b2 e to the power minus alpha y plus b3 e to the power i beta plus b4 into e to the power minus i beta then after converting this into cosine and sine term and this is converted into cos hyperbolic and sine hyperbolic terms similarly this is also cos hyperbolic and sine hyperbolic term but there will be change of sign. So after rearranging the constant or plugging the constant of the same term, so we can write capital Y is equal to C1 cos H alpha Y plus C3 sin H alpha Y plus C3 cos beta Y plus C4 sin beta Y. Now this is obtained because when we expand this in terms of hyperbolic function we will get two hyperbolic function cos hyperbolic alpha y plus sin hyperbolic alpha y and constant is associated with this as b1. Similarly when we expand this or this express this term exponential term in cos hyperbolic and sin hyperbolic function we will get b2 into cos hyperbolic minus alpha y minus sin hyperbolic alpha y. So that means plugging together the constant of sin hyperbolic terms and cos hyperbolic terms and cosine terms and sin terms. We can now write the solution very easily as capital Y equal to C1 cos hyperbolic alpha y plus C2 sin hyperbolic alpha y plus C3 cos beta y 
plus c4 sin beta y. I am taking the first derivative of this equation then d capital Y by dy is equal to c1 alpha sin h sin hyperbolic alpha y plus c2 alpha cos hyperbolic alpha y minus c3 beta sin beta y plus c4 beta cos beta y. So, because we need uh, function y and its derivative because of fixity condition given in the edge y is equal to 0 and y is equal to b. So, therefore, slope must be 0 at the fixed end. Hence, we obtain the uh, first derivative of this function. Now, apply the boundary condition at y is equal to 0 and y is equal to b. As y is equal to 0 and dy by dy is also 0 at the fixed end. So, we get after putting this y is equal to 0 in this uh, two equation we get c1 equal to minus c3 obviously and another condition we get c4 equal to minus c2 alpha by beta. So, we can reduce the number of constant in this mode shape function. So, the equation with reduced number of constants are written as y is equal to c1 cos hyperbolic alpha y minus cos beta y plus c2 sin hyperbolic alpha y minus alpha by beta sin beta y and d capital y by dy that is differentiation of function capital y with respect to y equal to c1 alpha sin hyperbolic alpha y plus beta sin beta y plus c2 c2 sin hyperbolic alpha beta minus alpha by beta sin beta b equal to 0. So, therefore, we get another equation after uh, putting this y is equal to 0 uh, in this y is equal to b actually the boundary condition at y is equal to 0 when we put then we get these two equation. Now substituting the condition at y is equal to b now we get two equation two homogeneous equation which are c1 cos hyperbolic alpha beta alpha b minus cos beta b plus c2 sin hyperbolic alpha b minus alpha by beta sin beta b equal to 0. So, this equation is coming from the condition that uh, this deflection w at y is equal to 0 equal to 0. And second equation is coming from the condition that w del y square equal to 0 at y is equal to 0 and this is uh, y is equal to b yeah, sorry y is equal to b because plate has a dimension a along the x axis and b along the y axis. So, y is equal to b deflection is 0 and also the slope not bending moment because this edge is fixed. So, therefore, you will get dw by dy equal to 0 at y is equal to b. So, these two condition gives rise to these two homogeneous equation. The second equation you can see as a result of derivative the factor alpha and beta and uh, this alpha by beta is coming outside, but since uh, here the beta is in denominator. So, here we are getting this simply cos beta b and common factor is alpha. So, we are writing the solution as c1 alpha sin hyperbolic alpha beta plus beta sin beta b plus c2 alpha cos hyperbolic alpha b minus cos beta b. These two equations are homogeneous and in boundary value problem we generally encounter this type of equation. If two unknown constants are there we must have two homogeneous equation. If three unknown constants are there we must have three unknown equations like that. Now, you can see one possible solution is c1 and c2 equal to 0 and that assumption that c1 equal to c2 equal to 0 not give you any meaningful result. So, this, this will give you trivial result. For non-trivial result the determinant of the matrix that we form by the coefficient of c1 and c2 that is a 2 by 2 matrix 
and if we equate the determinant to 0 then we will get a non-trivial solution of this alpha and beta but remember that the equation that you have to solve is actually not a simple equation it is transcendental type and contains this hyperbolic function or trigonometrical function so you have to solve it by numerically because closed form solution of that type of equation is not possible for non trivial solution we equate the determinant cos hyperbolic alpha beta minus cos beta b sin hyperbolic alpha b minus alpha by b sin beta b and then second row is alpha sin hyperbolic alpha beta plus beta sin beta b into sin cos hyperbolic alpha b minus cos beta b equal to 0. On expansion of the determinant one gets a cos hyperbolic alpha b minus alpha cos hyperbolic alpha b cos beta b minus alpha cos beta b cos hyperbolic beta b plus alpha cos square beta b minus alpha sin square sin hyperbolic square alpha b plus alpha square by beta sin hyperbolic alpha b sin beta minus beta into sin hyperbolic alpha b minus sin beta b plus alpha sin square beta b. Now some term can be combined because you can see this is one term and uh, with sin we are getting another term. So if I combine this then it will be alpha and these two terms when added it will give alpha and another term is this and this. So when these two are added we get alpha and here also we get alpha. So two alpha now here you can see two alpha is obtained here and the other term that you contain uh, that contains here alpha here. So if you combine this term then you will get this is also similar to that. So you will get this equation that 2 alpha cos hyperbolic h alpha b minus cos hyperbolic uh, cos beta b. You remember this is the hyperbolic term and this is trigonometrical term. Now other terms will be alpha square minus beta square sin hyperbolic alpha beta into sin beta b. So this is the transcendental equation. Transcendental equation very carefully you have to obtain. Transcendental equation. So this type of problem is written in a computer code in numerical recipes which is available in Fortran or C++. Okay. Numerical solution will yield some roots say we are uh, I have given it uh, for three roots it will be um, all the roots can be obtained if you carefully bracket and bisect again. So gamma 1 1 whole square equal to 28.945 by s square and gamma 1 2 square equal to 69.328 s square by s square and gamma square 2 1 equal to 54.743 by s square. Therefore, if we are interested to fundamental frequency, we can get this because we know that uh, gamma to the power 4. So here gamma 1 1 to the power 4 is equal to rho omega 1 1 square by d. Now when we obtain the gamma, it will come as the roots will come as the gamma 1 1 a that is some value. So after uh, substituting this the, you see the gamma 1 1 will be beta by a. Beta is another number you may not uh, should not confuse with the beta that I have given here. Let us take any one say any one say q. So this will be q by a and then uh, this after substituting this now here in this case the a that is we are obtained is Q is here 28.945 that is the root over by A. So therefore after substituting this you will get omega 1 1 
28.945 root over d by rho a. So, a is a square is there here in this term. So, we are uh, getting here in the square root inside the square root in the denominator we are getting rho a. So, d by rho a. So, this is the constant even we have seen that simply supported case also root over d by rho a is a common constant in all the frequencies. But this factor varies depending on the boundary conditions and other things. Now let us show the mode shape. Now we have considered this edge is fixed and this edge is also fixed and this is simply supported. So at x is equal to uh, if I draw a section say along A this section line then I will see this is the simply supported edge and deflected shape will be this because here slope will be not 0. This corresponds to this fundamental mode m is equal to 1 and also if I consider n is equal to 1 then we will see that this section along BB is like that. So here you will see that slope is 0 so it satisfies the boundary condition. So mode shape will appear like that. And in case of fixed edge, the deflection will reduce. Now, if I consider this uh, 1 to edge, then uh, this along the length direction, again the uh, plate is simply supported at the two ends. So, therefore, whatever earlier mode we get, mode shape we get, we will get the similar things. But when n is equal to 2, we will get a waveform that is a wave that will generate here with this with this type of here you will find for any section you will get this type of wave and therefore you will get a nodal line is obtained by joining such points. So here you can see at b by 2 the nodal point is situated. The significance of nodal point is that at this point no deflection is produced. Now let us see the higher modes. So mode 2 1. Now here m is equal to 2. Here you can see the usual mode shape of the simply supported beam that we obtain because m is 2 the two half waves are formed along the x direction length direction. But since this edge are fixed edge so along the section bb we will get the deflection shape as this where this uh, Con con corresponding to first mode of the fixed edge therefore it will be this here the slope is 0 you can see it and therefore nodal line will appear here that means the we have seen this how it is varies so here nodal line is situated at a by 2 so at along all this point any point on this nodal line deflection is 0. Then if I consider 2 2 that is 2 half waves are formed in both the direction. So in that case the shape mode shape that is produced in x direction is like that with one node and mode shape produced in the y direction is also having one node. This node is at a by 2 this node is at a by 2 and this node is at b by 2. So we are getting two nodal lines in this case. So two nodal lines are obtained. Similarly you can find the, the mode shapes in the higher modes also you can draw it qualitatively. Now let us discuss another case where x is equal to 0 x is equal to a are simply supported. Okay, That we have already considered it. But what about other two edges? Other two edges in the earlier case we have assumed that it is fixed at the two opposite edges. But here we will assume that uh, at y is equal to 0 the edge is simply supported whereas at y is equal to b the edge is free. So that is very interesting boundary condition. Here it is simply supported here it is free. But the Levy's equation that we have taken w is equal to y sin m pi x by a will also be valid for this case. So the solution is obtained here uh, as we have considered in the earlier cases but here we have not substituted it with sin hyperbolic and cosine hyperbolic. 
just for to mean something so here obviously imposing boundary condition at y is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 you will get c3 equal to 0 because deflection has to be 0 so c3 must vanish but c1 should be equal to minus c2 hence y becomes consisting of only two terms a sin hyperbolic alpha y plus b sin beta y in which a and b are constants for the edge y is equal to b that edge you are seeing in the dead edge there are two boundary condition instead of uh, this three boundary condition because of Kirchhoff's SCR. So here the plate is simply supported at the two opposite edges x is equal to 0 x is equal to a and in the one edge say y is equal to 0 is also simply supported but here it is free. So this end is free. So it is a rectangular plate of dimension a by b. This is zero origin and x is measured along this direction positive and y is measured along this direction. So because the simply supported end we know that this uh, bending moment is zero and deflection is zero. So at y is equal to zero there is no difficulty to write the boundary equations because at y is equal to 0, deflection is 0 and we have also d square y that curvature dy square equal to 0. But at the free edge we will have bending moment is 0 and we cannot now neglect this, this second term which is the curvature along the x-axis because this uh, edge is free so therefore this edge will be deflected and therefore curvature also exists. So two terms in the bending moment equation should be considered here and this is from bending moment at y is equal to b equal to 0. Then at the free edge the Kirchhoff's SCR this is called Kirchhoff's Kirchhoff's SCR and that we have found the expression as D del cube w by del y cube plus 2 minus mu into del cube w by del y del x square equal to 0. The first one is 0 bending moment condition at y is equal to b and the second one is 0 SCR condition. However, for y is equal to 0 this condition is valid. So, we are now taking the derivative of the function that we obtain and we write d square y by dy square minus mu, mu is the Poisson ratio. For a given material this will be fixed if it is not changing with x and y. Then m square pi square divided by s square into y. And another uh, boundary equation is d cube y that is the third derivative let us first take the derivative then we will combine it. So third derivative is becoming as which is required in this case is d cube y by d y cube minus 2 minus mu divided by s square m square pi square d y by uh, d capital Y by d small y. So these are the two conditions that is obtained from the at the free edge that is y is equal to b what are the conditions at free edge free edge condition is bending moment is 0 that you have to combine the curvature in both direction and then equate to 0 and also the SCR is 0 SCR is found after combining the twisting moment and shear force q that is mxy and q x when you combine it uh, taking the mxy as equivalent shear then we can find the the s shear force. So after finding these two equations now we can write the derivative of this y function is now reduced to a function of two unknown constants say a and b. So easily we can obtain the derivative dy capital Y by y d square capital Y by dy square and d cube y by dy cube y is equal to say it is given a combination of 
hyperbolic and trigonometrical function. So when you take the derivative, we are getting a alpha cos hyperbolic alpha y plus b beta cos beta y. Then after uh, second derivative, we get taking second derivative, we get a alpha square sin hyperbolic alpha y minus b beta square sin beta y. Then d cube y by dy cube, we are getting a alpha cube cos h alpha cube alpha y minus b beta cube and when you differentiate this again uh, this cos term will come so it is coming as cos beta y now applying the zero bending moment condition and zero s share condition that is bending moment i am writing symbolically zero at y is equal to b and s share that is by is 0 at y is equal to b y is equal to b so this condition we now assume after assuming this condition we substitute this in the boundary equation that we obtain we obtain separately the derivative of the equation and in the previous slide you have seen this is the two equations where you have to put y differentiate y twice and then put y is equal to b so finally we get two homogeneous equation a bracket alpha square minus mu m square pi square by s square sin hyperbolic pi b minus b into beta square plus mu into m square pi square by s square into sin beta b equal to zero that is one equation obtained from the bending moment condition that is bending moment condition at y is equal to b that is m y is 0 ok not m x m y is 0 in the second condition the s share is 0 that is utilized now and we obtain this a alpha bracket alpha square minus 2 minus mu m square pi square by s square cos hyperbolic alpha beta minus b beta bracket closed beta square plus 2 minus mu m square pi square by s square cos beta b equal to 0. So, two equations are obtained now and one obvious solution is a is equal to 0, b is equal to 0, but that is a trivial uh, trivial matter. So, it will not give you any mode shape. Okay, mode shape as you have seen, it is com composed of uh, y sin m pi x by a and y is a sin hyperbolic alpha y plus b sin beta y. So, if this a and b are taken 0 then we will not get the meaningful mode shape. So therefore for non-trivial solution again the coefficient of a and b has to be 0. Now if I write the equation in the matrix form and here the coefficient of a is say is a function of alpha alpha beta etc. So this is first function alpha beta then again this is a function of alpha uh, sorry f2 is equal to f2 is equal to into uh, f2 uh, a function of alpha and beta then f3 is alpha beta and f4 is alpha beta. So, four functions are we can identify from this. This one function is your is our f1 alpha beta and this function is our f2 alpha beta. Then this is the function that we should take for f3 alpha beta uh, including this including this we take f3 alpha beta and here also we take this as fourth function the last function f4 alpha beta. So we are getting uh, a transcendental equation after expanding the determinant. So for non-trivial solution the if I expand this determinant of the function alpha beta different function 
f3 alpha beta f4 alpha beta equal to 0 then we get a transcendental equation that transcendental equation again have to be solved numerically there is no other way that you can find the exact solution but the transcendental equation that is formed is the close from solution of the uh, equation of motion but to get the roots you again have to take the numerical technique so beta uh, bracket alpha square minus gamma uh, mu m square pi square by s square into beta square plus 2 minus mu into mu into m square pi square by s square into 10 hyperbolic alpha beta and right hand side we are getting alpha beta square plus mu m square pi square by s square whole square into 10 beta. So here you will get infinite number of values of alpha and beta. So when you combine this alpha and beta with this uh, gamma that is the factor taken for natural frequency then we can find the natural frequency. So this is solved uh, that alpha beta contains gamma. So therefore natural frequency is calculated once we can find out this alpha and beta. Now let us give some uh, let us give some formulation or I will derive it for free vibration response of simply supported plate. The plate is very important structure uh, that is used in uh, say building slab and the deck slab of the bridge or any other mechanical on aerospace applications. So here when the suppose the structure is excited by external force and the excitation ceases after some time then immediately the structural response will not be vanished. So it will undergo free oscillation and if the damping is not present then oscillation will continue for long uh, for indefinite period. But in real structure the damping is present so therefore attenuation of the response takes place and when the force is removed the the, res, uh, the displacement velocity or acceleration any response quantity that you take will be uh, close to zero at very high time very large time or if depending on the damping this uh, uh, vanishes even in earlier also. So substitute the infinite series in this equation that the infinite series is this this is due to mode superposition technique you remember this this we write and it is possible to write because mode superposition technique for linear structure is established mode superposition principle So it is uh, this double sum WMN XY QMN T. If we substitute this, then we get this term. Okay. Now this term can be written as from phi vibration equation that we earlier obtained. Say we obtain this D for any mode MN WMN is equal to rho omega square capital WMN. So substituting this here the WMN rho omega square WMN and multiply both sides by another mode WRS and then integrate over the domain. So when you carry out the integration because of orthogonality condition in this summation process all the terms will be vanished except the term when m is equal to R and n is equal to S. So in that condition you will get the discretized equation of phi vibration in generalized time dependent coordinate say q m n are the time dependent coordinate. So it is given as q double dot m n as a function of time plus omega m n whole square q m n t equal to 0 where m n is 1 2 3 and it varies like that. The displacement in generalized coordinates in MN mode is now QMN 
equal to E M N sin omega n t plus h omega n cos omega n t where E M N and h M N are two constant. You should not confuse E with the Young's modulus because here the subscript is added. So therefore, the earlier equation that is a second order constant coefficient equation and its solution is very well known that is containing sine term and cosine term. So we can write like that or you can write also including one trigonometrical function but incorporating phase angle. Now let us now solve for the constants utilizing the initial conditions. Given the response of the plate at location x y at t is double sum w m n x y into E m n sin omega n t plus h m n cos omega n t. Then for simply supported plate we can write w m n as if the mode shape normalized with respect to mass is used that I have discussed in the previous lecture. We can use this uh, mode shape 2 by root over m p sin m n m pi x by a sin n pi y by b bracket E m n sin omega n t plus h m n cos omega n t. Remember that this function is for simply supported case. So we are discussing a simply supported case for initial value problem. Now we have to get this constant of integration. So to do this we first apply the initial condition given at t is equal to 0 the initial configuration of the plate is w naught x y equal to double sum m n 2 by root over m p sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b h m n multiply both sides by w r s that is another mode shape function equal to 2 divided by root m p sin r pi x by a sin s pi y by b and integrate over the plate domain. So if you integrate over the plate domain then you will get 4 by m p how 4 by m p is coming when you multiply this uh, right hand side by this function 4 by m p will come and integration of this sin square r pi x by a dx and sin s pi y by b square when m is equal to r and n is equal to s we are getting a b by 4 according to property of sine function and this constant h m n are there. So based on that now we can obtain the h m n equal to double integration 2 by root m p divided by a b where m p is the total mass of the plate. If mass density is mass density per unit area is rho then rho into a b where a b is the area of the rectangular plate will give you m p. So writing this h m n equal to in double integration into 2 root m p by a b w naught x y sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b dx dy where m p is total mass of the plate. So this factor is this okay. Then another constant still remains. So that can be evaluated if we know other condition. So other condition on because when you put t is equal to 0 in this expression then this term vanishes because sin 0 is 0. So only h m n is important. Now taking the derivative of this mode shape and this response of the plate at this x y 0 and putting t is equal to 0 we get the initial velocity. Initial velocity say it is given v naught x y because t is no longer uh, appearing in the equation because we have substituted t as a constant value and constant value is taken here 0. So it is equal to double sum m n 2 by root m p sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b e m n omega m n that is coming due to differentiation of sin function sin omega n t and e m n is a constant associated with this sin function. Multiply both sides by this w r s that means same procedure we will adopt here to extract the value of e m n.
so wrs is the another mode shape function in the mode rs and then integrate over the domain of the plate using orthogonality condition of the modes then we get emn equal to 0 uh, integration limit 0 to a integration limit 0 to b 2 root over mp divided by omega mn ab b naught xy sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b dx dy so emn and hmn are obtained let us illustrate this with a problem a square plate whose surface has small denting of 0 0.005 m meter situated at 0.4 a 0.6 a so now we write the mode superposition technique again for finding the displacement and in this problem the initial configuration is given that is directly w naught x y an initial condition for the plate is given this displacement is given whereas the velocity velocity is zero so what are the questions that we have to answer let us see first we have to answer the fundamental natural frequency of the plate second we have to answer the expression for the displacement at the central point of the plate take a is equal to 4 meter now here i will take a slightly alter this dimension a i have taken 3.8 meter h is equal to 0 0.01 meter that is 10 mm e is equal to 2 into 10 to the power 5 newton meter square so e we have to convert into newton meter square so that is 2 into 10 to the power 11 newton per meter square given the initial condition of the plate initial velocity is 0 but initial displacement that is now at a discrete location so we use the we utilize the function direct delta so 0 0.005 direct delta x minus 0.4 a direct delta x minus 0.6 a writing this in the direct delta form because this is located at the discrete point we have the advantage to find out the integral very easily due to properties of the direct delta function so we take this initial displacement is this now let us first calculate one by one this fundamental frequency is corresponding to m is equal to 1 n is equal to 1 that is half waves are formed in the mode shape in both the direction so d is equal to e h cube divided by 12 1 minus mu square equal to after substituting this value that is nothing but e that we have shown and that is nothing but h the thickness of the plate and this is Poisson ratio mu so we get d is equal to 17021 newton per meter so omega 11 1 equal to 2 pi square root over 17021 divided by 78.5 that is the mass because density of the steel plate if it is taken as a steel plate so density of the steel plate is 7850 kg per meter cube so rho will be 7850 into 0 0.01 that is 78.5 78.5 kg per meter square so here it is substituted and a we have assumed 3.8 so therefore omega 11 is coming as 20.13 displacement of the plate now given as this now we should not write so many uh, sum summation with various terms because it is concerned with only fundamental mode so therefore our calculation gets simplified first let us calculate this constant of integration it is also stated a denting exists in the initial configuration of the plate at 0.4 a 0.6 a so w is equal to x y 0 equal to w naught x y equal to 0 0.005 delta x minus 0.4 a into delta x minus 0.6 a property of the direct delta function is now very well known if a function is multiplied here it is a function of two variables is multiplied by direct delta x minus eta into direct delta y minus j y minus j and integrated over the domain of the plate 
or any integration if the domain extends from minus infinity to plus infinity then also theoretically that is nothing but f uh, this uh, eta j. So, this is the integral simple integral that we require. Now, given the initial velocity of the plate 0, we directly get this constant E11 equal to 0. In fact, all E m n will be 0 for all values of m and n. Now, H11 is 2 root over m p by a square because it is a square plate. So, a by b that is we write in terms of a square into this is the value of the indent uh, that is denting. denting amount that is given in the plate that is a kind of depression that you can see in the plate in some plate it occurs because of impact of heavy weight or etc. So, it is uh, multiplied by direct delta x minus 0.4 a into direct delta y minus 0.6 a sin pi x by a sin pi y by b. Since x is equal to 0.4 a and x is equal to y is equal to 0.6 a this initial condition is only significant. So, we are putting this this 0 0.005 sin 0.4 pi sin 0.6 pi into 2 is coming here and root m p that is the mass of the plate divided by a square 3.8 square. So, it is coming as the constant is coming as 0 0.005549 at the center of the plate w is equal to 0.5 a that is x is equal to 0.5 a 0.5 a because it is a square plate and at any time instant t we are now writing this equation obviously this will give 1 and therefore the displacement is coming as after substituting the frequency omega 11 20.13 t h11 as we have got earlier as 0.00 whatever we have got and then we multiplied again by 2 by root mp it is coming as 0 0.00125 meter. So, that means amplitude of the displacement curve it is a cosine type and then this uh, amplitude is 1.25 millimeter. Velocity amplitude is equal to 0 0.00125 into 20.13 equal to 0 0.025 meter per second. Acceleration amplitude that is absolute value is equal to 0 0.00125 into 20.13 square equal to 0 0.506 meter per second square equal to 0 0.05 g where g is the acceleration due to gravity. So, in this lecture we discuss the eigenvalue problem of rectangular plate with two different conditions not fully simply supported. So, two conditions are two opposite edges simply supported and other two edges are clamped and second condition two opposite edges simply supported and one edge simply supported while opposite edge other opposite edge is free. After completing this uh, eigenvalue analysis that is we target actually to derive the transcendental equation frequency equation. Then we discussed the initial value problem in simply supported rectangular plate simply supported rectangular plate rectangular plate and solved one numerical example to show what is the this uh, this displacement amplitude velocity amplitude and then uh, the acceleration amplitude due to a denting that is uh, existing in the uh, plate which has been taken as a initial configuration of the plate as w naught x y and denting we have expressed in terms of direct delta function on the flat surface of the plate. Thank you very much.